So like yourself, I would wake up, my mom had black eyes, missing tooth, and I was like, dang, what's going on? So even though I would, as a kid, be in my bed, I was so scared, like I could hear, I was like, oh no, she's starting to argue with him, please don't do that, don't do that, you can't tell me what to do, whatever. I was like, oh crap, here we go. Boom, boom, boom. And being a kid, I was like so paralyzed, like in my mind, I'm jumping out of bed, don't do that to her, you better stop it. Or I'm like, I'm gonna run away, <laughs> like, you know, just thinking of like all sorts of different things that I could do, welcome. And so I know that trauma of like all those different complexities where my dad on the one hand was very intellectual, he was an artist, oh, he's such a good guy, like, you know, doing stuff in the neighborhood, but I'm like, hello, what's going on in my house? Like, that's not very good. And he himself, so I appreciate what you're doing and what the other man was saying. Both my parents grew up. My dad was sexually abused by his father. His father was classic pedophile, going out into the neighborhood. He abused all of my dad, my aunt, my uncle. And he was the type of extreme alcoholic drunk, where when my grandma knew that grandpa was coming home, she would hide the kids underneath the house because she knew once grandpa came home, there was going to be hell. And so I always wonder, like, well, if they grew up and my mother also was raped and experienced uh, childhood sexual abuse by her uh, grandfather, it's like, okay, these two people get together. They're both abused. They both have alcoholism, drug addiction. And then I come along. Well, don't they know that it sucks to get abused as a kid? <laughs> like, why are you abusing me? So as a kid, I always felt like it's going to stop with me. I didn't really understand all of, like, the different dynamics of it. Well, I was like, this pretty much sucks, and I'm not going to raise my kids like this. If they were abused and crying about it, like, duh. So, 4 to 14, kept the secret. I was always so afraid if anybody asked me. Because um, I didn't know what to say at first. I was like, is this normal? Like, why is everybody doing this to me? Like, am I a target? And then I just was so afraid of going against my own father. Well, one night, we had an argument. And my dad, he drove a motorcycle. So he come over where I was, I was babysitting for a neighbor. You're supposed to be home, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, boom, smacked me across the face. I was like, oh shit. Never been hit by my dad before. And the police were called and they came out. They said, either you go home with your dad or you come with us. I looked over at my dad, blackness. Like my life flashed before my eyes. I was 14. It's like, am I gonna become my mother now? Is this going to be what's going to happen? So I said, nope, going with the police. <laughs> so I went with the police and I told my story, but I didn't know what was going to happen. I figured, I'll tell them my story. I'll go back to my friend's house. I didn't even have shoes on that night. I was like wearing a pair of jeans, a t-shirt. I'm like, okay, go to the police station, whatever. And they asked me all the different questions, like what happened when you're four or five, whatever, whatever. So I told them all that. And the next morning... I didn't know they were going to arrest my dad. So my dad was arrested. A lady picked me up from the police station. She said, you can't go to your friend's house. You're coming with me. It was a social worker. And they put me into a foster home. And it was some white family, military. They served me like this porridge of like, what the heck is this? I was just had the tears running down my face. I'm like, oh my god, like, I just want to go home. Like, I'm going to play with my dog and my cats. Now my mom, she was living homeless at the time. and. She left my dad because of the abuse, but guess what? Got a boyfriend who was even more abusive. He wouldn't let her see me. They would disappear. They were living homeless. He put a knife in my mom's back. Today, she still has the tip of the knife in her back. He knocked out all her teeth. She had went to the dentist, got like nice teeth to put in like the falsies. He threw them in the river. You're not gonna be beautiful, same like uh, the other lady was saying, and yourself. Oh, you think you're all that? Whatever, whatever. Like just breaking down, breaking down, breaking down the um, the like sense of ourselves. So, <laughs> I know it's a lot to tell you in one moment, and please, if you feel triggered, just know like I'm okay. I've done a lot of therapy, but yes, I still deal with anxiety. I deal with depression, and I've learned a lot of tools to deal with it. It's very hard. So, like the journey to get to this point, a lot of breakdowns. A lot. Then when I um. So I lived in foster care from 14 to 18. My mom was supposed to get a job. They were supposed to help her. She finally did get a job, finally did get a place, but the abusive boyfriend was still in the picture. 
and I hated him. I was like, I wish that dude would die. <laughs> you know? I just felt like, why is this guy always taking my mom away from me? So when I had gone into foster care, the house was foreclosed upon. They threw all our stuff out on the street, you know, because my mom was homeless, nobody was there to take care of the house. Like you're saying, it's very hard to leave because the man is making the money. And so my mom, all those years, she had even left the home before when I was 13, so I was just stuck in the house with my dad. So it's like all the complications of things. And um, me being a lot like my dad, he's an artist, intellectual, knows all the family history. So it's like that one part of you that wants the dad, wants the comfort. And then when all the other people were abusing me, well, it's like, who can I go to tell this to? Can I tell my dad, like, hey, this dude just raped me. Is he going to care? Because, like, duh, he's doing the same thing. So I just want to say that I understand all that. I understand all the different emotions. And with healing through the arts, so for, for 14 to 18 in foster care, doing traditional therapy, there was one art therapist that came to visit a support group that I went to. And I was like, oh, I didn't know you could use art for healing. And so I started doing more art. And then as an adult, that was more difficult because now I'm graduated and you're like, oh, you're free. But it's like, how do you make decisions? Like, I don't have a mentor. Like, how do you buy a car? How do you, like, get an apartment? Like, those kinds of things. They're like, okay, you graduated, bye. So it's even harder as an adult to navigate, like, establishing yourself and getting connected. And you find that I knew that I got into relationships. I started to um, always feel that I never belonged anywhere. And I would love when I, like, my roommate's parents or their people's families, I got real attached to other people's families. But then at the end of the day, you have to go home. Like, it's all lovey, where we like, you're eating with them. But then it's like, okay, go home. And you're like, I'm all by myself again. <laughs> you know, this is not very fun. So I was married for a long time and going through different traumas, going through life. I also lost two babies and had miscarriages. And it's like, it sucks because you're dealing with all this trauma. Then you're trying to be a woman and it's like, what is the family, are the babies gonna make me more of a woman? Is a job gonna make me more of a woman? So my journey through the arts has really helped me be self-expressed. And I'll just tell you a few quick things. So I used to sing a lot, I was doing classical um, singing. And when you're trying to sing like an opera singer, they're like training you to open your mouth like, no, 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 you know, like that kind of stuff. The fact of like somebody telling me to open my mouth was very like, I had to overcome a lot because growing up, we're seen as women, oh, open your mouth, like are you gonna give a blow job or, you know, mm -hmm. like very sexual of how women are treated. Mm -hmm. So the fact that somebody wants me to open my mouth, I was like, no, it was very scary for me. And very scary to project my voice out. Even just recently, so then I've done dance, like hula, where we dance barefoot or doing breathing exercises. And what I found with art is that it helps me be connected in my body. Even up until recently, I hated when people said, how are you doing? I don't know, because I'm not here. <laughs> you know, my mind escaped a long time ago. My mind escaped growing up being that kid, like when my dad would abuse me, I put the pillow over my head. I didn't want to be there. And even as women, like we oftentimes escape, we do what we need to do to survive. But I want to encourage you that there are safe places there are safe places that we create among ourselves, and through art, it is healing. And you're learning different things along the way. How to tell your story, maybe how to speak a little bit louder. Maybe you did some breathing or yoga exercises, and like, oh, wait a minute, I actually do feel my heart beating. My stomach hurts. I'm feeling anxious, my heart's beating fast. Maybe I should take some breaths. So everybody practice that, just put your hand on your heart, See if your heart's being fast or slow, or are you feeling sad or anxious? But let's just breathe through it. Let's take a deep breath. Thank you for being here today. Let's take another deep breath. Thank you for surviving. Thank you for being on this journey. Thank you, Giselle. Thank you for people bringing us together today. Thank you, son, for seeing me today. Thank you for being born. And just stretch out. Oh. And give yourself a big hug. You deserve all the beauty, 
all the love, all the abundance. I said, forget that crap. <laughs> I'm going to be making me a skirt today. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> welcome you and thank you and say I see you I understand and even though each day is a just that may be up it may be down I too go through that I too break down and cry I too get triggered but there is hope you know through all these processes there is hope we can get jobs we can get established we can take care of ourselves so thank you Lisa Jones, I'm also indigenous from Turtle Island. I'm from the Lumbee tribe of North Carolina. And um, when Jennifer first asked me to come here and, you know, share space with beautiful people in South Africa, you know, I knew everybody had to talk about something. So I'm sitting there, what, what, do I, what, what am I going to talk about? And so when I started having conversations, with Jennifer, she she told she had told me her story, and then when you know I thought about the teachings of of our ancestors, and so a lot of our women, you know, our indigenous women, they go through these traumas. You know, this is a you know a universal thing, and so what a lot of women have done in their process of healing is reconnect with their ancestral teachings. And so one of our central teachings is the sacredness of the circle. Everything is circular. And so in the beginning, when there was nothing but creator, you know, creator be began everything by sending thoughts out into the universe. And so with thoughts going out in all directions, it formed a circle. And so here in the middle is creator. And so within that, that is the power of the circle. The power of the circle is creator in the middle. And so this skirt that I'm wearing today, it's called, we call it a ribbon skirt. This is one of the garments that our people have been making for generations. It's based on the sacred teachings of the circle because your skirt is also a circle. The bottom part that opens up wider is this outside circle. And so then you have the smaller circle where you go, there's a smaller circle here and you're in the middle. And so in the same way the creator gives the circle meaning by being in the center of it all, we give our skirts meaning by being in the center, we give them life. And so, you know, these teachings and coming back to, you know, the origin and reconnecting with mother earth, reconnecting with creator, reconnecting with everything that our ancestors left us, that's where the healing comes in for our women. They're, they're processing their trauma and then they're reconnecting and finding their space as sacred beings because trauma beats that out of you. You feel less than, you feel, you know, you don't know your direction anymore. And when you reconnect with that sacredness that's in all of us, that's where that healing comes from because you're, you know, you have so much power within you because creator put it there. Nobody can take that from you. You know, that, that came from creator and it'll always be there. That's your light. And so I came here from Turtle Island to share these teachings with you and to also share this, the making of this ribbon skirt because this is a way that many of our women have found healing and once our women are healed, we're the, we're the centers of our families, we're the centers of our communities. So our families can heal, our communities can heal. You know, the, the power of the woman is, is in creation because we're the only ones that can bring life into the world. And so from the, from the moment you are conceived, you're connected to all of creation, that's your sacredness. And so that's what I want to share with you today. And so what we did was we went out and found some fabrics. So what we wanted to find beautiful African fabrics that included the color purple. And so, 
you know, we, we, found, we found these beautiful fabrics, you know, and we're hoping that each one of you will pick a fabric that resonates with you. And so they're all unified by the color purple. You know, this is, this is something, you know, that we identify with too, you know, in the United States. And so, you know, this resonance, um, I think is, is just so amazing. And so, you know, we want each and every one of you to come up and, you know, pick which fabric you like. So each, each bundle is about two or three skirts. And so we'll have that, um, you know, organized and, you know, it's going to be your creation. So we'll yeah. we can, uh, I guess we can kind of start with a line. Yeah, so. so well, and then just logistically, we know we may not finish the skirts today, but we want everyone to at least pick the fabrics, we'll measure, cut them, pick some ribbons, and then we'll work out for when, either tomorrow or the next day, and depending on the schedule and work with Gazella to make sure everybody can finish. One last note, excuse me, as you pick up your fabrics, I do have some things back here that if anybody would like to pick a dress or a top, and I have some t-shirts from my first workshop uh, where I did a workshop for survivors of rape, incest, and foster care. So we have like some different shirts and stuff. You're also welcome to pick some happy and fabrics. Then you need like a little flower oh, yeah. in your hair like this, yeah. like. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these bundles may still have papers on them.